game's a little bit more of a difficult test, but New Jersey still isn't at the same level as Dallas and, and Nashville and the Ducks lost to them. So I'm happy that it's, it's starting to move in the right direction for those two lines, but you got to take it a little bit with a grain of salt because you don't know how they're going to fare against some of the better teams in the Western Conference. No, it's true. Um, it's very true. These are must-win games, and they are absolutely games the Ducks should be able to win, and they did. So that's important as well. The whole play to the level of competition, I felt like the Ducks carried the majority of the play through both these past two games. So that's also important to look at. I mean, I know that you and I, uh, we both have no problem being critical of our home team here. But we mean we got to remain positive as this because we've been begging for this team to come around and these uh, these secondary scoring lines to get points and for the Ducks to pick up points in the standings and able to get four out of the last two games is just so crucial with how tight this playoff race has become because the Ducks sat around the last three prior and let other teams catch up. So it's just crucial to get. And before we go any further... Shout out to Marcus Patterson. He had a hell of a game. Yeah. He was on there on the ice for, I mean, he had the best possession percentages out of anybody on the team. Granted, he doesn't play, you know, the lion's share of minutes. He ended up playing 12 minutes and 52 seconds. They had 20 chances for and nine chances against. So good on him. I felt like uh, he didn't look out of place in this game. But again, that Brandon Montour and Cam Fowler pairing has just been monstrous for the Ducks. And I don't know, that is just gonna write the check for Brandon Montour. Yeah, hey, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that guy, but he's really turned his game around this season. Yeah, and, and again, they were the to the line or the defensive pairing that played the most minutes in all situations. Cam Fowler played 25 minutes. Montour was third, about a minute under Hampus Lindholm, uh, and Manson ended up only playing uh, 21 minutes. So those two li- uh, pairings obviously being utilized the most, but the fact that now the Ducks are relying more. On Fowler and Montour, like you said, it does just write the check for Montour because he had that very good game where he had two goals against Vancouver, had another strong effort in this one. Obviously didn't get any points, but he's really worked on his all-around defensive game, and I I think he's just really gelled with Cam Fowler, which is something we've been waiting for for a long time, for those two to really find their partner. And, of course, it ends up being each other who work well together. And again, nice for for Marcus Pedersen to come back into the lineup, have a strong game, led all Ducks players in shot attempts. He had a 60, just under 69%, close to 4 percentage in all situations. So very strong game from him, even though he has to deal with Boschman and probably will have to swap out and and have to deal with Holzer a bit while BX is out. But it's kind of nice to have him back in the lineup. I mean, we had uh, hashtag free Marcus Pedersen going for one game before he got back in, and then he had a strong game in this one, so it's nice to see. No, absolutely. And just to stay on the on the uh, topic of the blue line, I got to ask you about uh, what's going on with Hampus Lindholm and Josh Manson. I know that you look at you have to look at the body of work. You can't pick out a stretch of five or six games and go, oh, they're they're crap. I mean, they're playing like yeah. crap. They're terrible players. You know, what happened? You know, what's going on here? And, and I don't want to get too detailed on them, but do you think something has changed um, without having to jump into like deployments and zone starts and all of that and, and getting super analytical? Just, have you seen anything on the surface for their game as to why maybe there has been a slight change and slight dip in performance? Yeah, I don't really know. I, I mean, I haven't noticed too much of a difference in, in their individual play, at least. I feel like Lindholm's still doing what he does best. I mean, he separated a couple guys from the pucks in, in, in good positions last night in the Detroit game, and it's not like they got uh, any really. They didn't really play against the Detroit's best line necessarily. I mean, they played their most minutes, at least Lindholm did, against Bertuzzi and Nyquist, as well as Henrik Zetterberg. I mean, and they didn't really get caved in against them. It's just they haven't really been up to the standard that we expect from them, and I don't know if that's because now they they're not really held responsible to carry the load for the Ducks because Fowler and Montour uh, allows them to, you know, take a break a bit. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they'll rebound, honestly. And, and again, like you said, we can't really know too much without diving into their zone starts to see if any of that's changed over the last, what, I guess it's been almost five to ten games where it's been a little bit difficult for them now. But uh, I feel like something definitely has changed, but it, it's not so noticeable on the ice as it is when you look and you dive into the stats after the game. You know, and that's why it's important to to not throw out the eye test just for analytics and not throw out analytics for the eye test because two can tell a different story and then you have yeah. to kind of mix them together to get an idea of how those guys are playing. Um, Lindholm and Manson are still great defenders. I was just, just surprised looking at, at the numbers here, but 
like I was saying, more impressively um, the way Marcus Pedersen played last night. And then Jakob Silver just had a hell of a game. He was all over the ice. He was dangerous. When he was on the ice, the team was creating chances. Obviously, he gets two assists on the night. It's good to see him kind of get his wheels turning again and you know get that Cogliano and Kessler line along with he on it going as we, the much needed secondary scoring here. Um, but we without going further off the blue line, I got to talk to you guys about Kevin Bieksa. Um, unfortunate as much as we like to talk about how he's not the strongest defender on the Ducks, and we say we, we refer to him as the old man or the dinosaur, whatever you want to say. Uh, he's a heart and soul guy, and uh, you know we we like the guy. We just feel like he's at the end of his time, and and the way Carlisle deploys him and Bob Murray, you know, they all work together on when they set up a lineup. I it's just the way it goes. So it's hard to fault BX of what minutes he plays. But uh, unfortunate for the guy here, has to have hand surgery. He's out two to five weeks. That was the reason for the call up for Kobini and Holzer, and that's why we're going to see Marcus Pedersen. And, uh, and Holzer probably will slot in here a couple of games just to get his feet wet here back in the NHL. What is your take on this, and, uh, and how do you see this panning out for Anaheim down the stretch, Eddie? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely disappointing for BX because I feel like you know he's a guy who definitely wants to be in the lineup every night. I mean, the, the good thing is it's not severe. I mean, he's just undergoing hand surgery to remove scar tissue. It's not like it's going to really hurt his career in the long run, I would think. But it it I don't want to say this because I it's you know I don't wish ill on on any player and I really not did all. not want to see Kevin B X be hurt but I feel like it helps the Ducks in their push for the playoffs because now we're gonna see Marcus Pedersen in there pretty much every night I really doubt Randy Carlisle goes to Boschman and Holter although I wouldn't put it past him but it really does help the Ducks chances because they were starting to use Boschman and B X together more often which is never an ideal situation. They caved in every time they're out there together. And now with him not available in the lineup, you at least have one guy back there who's a mobile defenseman who's a little bit younger, can skate a lot better than BX can, and I think it helps out the team. But it's unfortunate that it has to come due to an injury because it really Randy Carlisle should have never been playing them both together anyway. I mean, I felt like Marcus Pedersen, although wasn't playing that great, should be in the lineup on a nightly basis just to avoid that fact. But we, we wish BX a well. We hope that it's sooner rather than later that he can come back. I feel like he still is a valuable depth defenseman to this team where he can come in and, and plug in a role if, if Boschman is tired or, or they need to fill a role if, if Holter can't play. So I feel like he can play that role. Uh, but I, I love to see Marcus Pedersen in the lineup more often. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to get to the the, uh, the chance to see that. We're going to see him play yeah. more, obviously. But uh, Kessler will most likely be back, uh, I would say, playoff time. Um, if the Ducks are able to squeak in, which we all think they will be able to, they just got to make sure they stay strong down the stretch. They got very winnable games ahead, but they got tough opponents ahead, Yeah. Um, which I want to talk to you about here just for a second. You know, the game tomorrow is going to be a tough one against New Jersey. I mean, that team is having an unexpectedly great season. Taylor Hall is leading that team. Nico Heischer has been good. How do you feel New Jersey is going to give, um, or how do you, yeah, how much of a uh, of a game do you think New Jersey is going to give the Ducks tomorrow night? Do you think it's going to be a tough one, or do you feel like the Ducks have a legitimate chance to kind of steamroll this team? Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like the, there's an advantage in the fact that New Jersey plays LA today, and you're going to get a team that could be a little bit tired. I, I believe. Corey Schneider's back in the lineup for them, so I don't know if he's going tonight. I'd have to look into that or not, see if he's going against L.A. or if he's going to go against Anaheim. That obviously makes all the difference in the world because it's a lot easier to face Kincaid or Appleby or whoever they decide to send out there than it is to face Corey Schneider. But New Jersey's coming off two very, very impressive road wins against Nashville and Vegas. They beat Nashville in a shootout 3-2 last Saturday. And they beat Vegas on Wednesday 8-3. to And Taylor Hall wasn't even the center of the offense on that night. I believe he only had one or two points. So everybody was going for them. Hischer, Zaka, uh, Johansson, you know, all those guys were going for them on that night. So they're a scary team when they, they start playing, uh, when the secondary scoring kind of steps in. But there's no question that that team centers around Taylor Hall. And if yeah. he's having an off night, most of the time they're going to struggle. So I think it's going to be a lot of pressure on the Kessel line if that's the line that's tasked 
with shutting down Taylor Hall because that's really the pinnacle of their offense. And we talked about on the last show how him and McKinnon and Connor McDavid are really the three guys who are carrying their teams uh, this season, and, and two of them are just barely in the playoffs because that's really all that's going for them. So I think it's going to be tough. It's definitely tougher than Detroit and definitely tougher than Vancouver. I'm just interested to see who the starting goaltender is because as of right now, it says Corey Schneider is probable for it. So it really means nothing. I mean, he could either go or Kincaid could either go. So it'll be interesting to see who the Ducks end up facing. Yeah, and you know, and Keith Kincaid has been no slouch. He's 8-2 and two yep. in his last 10 games. Yep. So he's, he's a lesser lo- known name around the league. But uh, it's not like you're going to get some uh, some sieve and net if Corey Schneider's not in. The exactly. Ducks are going to have to bring their A game, I feel like. There's, there's no slowing down. You can't take a night off at this time of year. Uh, but the game after that, another biggie for the Ducks. I, that, it just doesn't get easier. This is a team, they're going to be playing here, um, Calgary on Wednesday, in Calgary. That's going to be a tough one too, Eddie. I feel like, I mean, with the playoff feel going on in a Detroit game, how much more magnified and how much more fire is going to be in that game? Yeah, I mean, that that's a huge game for the Flames as much as it is, it is, is for the Ducks as well. I mean, the Flames lost... 7-4 to four at home to San Jose last night, which was a tough loss for them. And it puts them in a difficult position because now they're 10 points, or sorry, they're 10 games remaining, 4 points out behind uh, Anaheim and Dallas for that wild card spot. And they're sitting 4 points behind LA, but LA has a game in hand. So that's a do or die game for them because if you lose that one, you've got about 8 games remaining, you're 6 points behind the next highest team to get into the playoffs. So that's going to be a very, very feisty game. It's always, you know, it's always a, a physical game when the Ducks play uh, the Flames, especially when Matthew Kachuk's in the lineup. Uh, right now he might have a concussion, so I don't know if he's going to be in that game, which is a relief for the Ducks if he's not, because not only is he a pest, but he's one of Calgary's best players, and he's been extremely, extremely good this season. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any easier. The, the, the New Jersey game is very tough. Calgary with Goodrow, Monahan, Kachuk when he's in the lineup, Dougie Hamilton, Giordano. They've got some guys who can hurt you. I feel like they're not playing as well as they could. I think they would, they're would. they a lot better team uh, than the standing show. So it, it's not, it doesn't get easier. And then after that, you've got Winnipeg too. So this is a real test coming up for the Ducks. You really have to get four out of six points or win all three to stay in the playoff race. Especially you want to rely on L.A. or San Jose to lose games. No, not when Evander Kane's scoring four goals. Yeah, um, he's That's the one tough. who lit up the Flames last night. And you know, Calgary is going to be just. I think this is going to be just a nasty, nasty game on Wednesday. I really yeah. feel. I don't want to look ahead past New Jersey because the Ducks need to get through New Jersey first. But that Calgary game in Calgary is going to be just. Don't miss this game. Yeah, it's at six thirty yeah. Pacific time. Um, you got to get in and watch that game. It's that these two teams legitimately hate each other. Calgary can't hate Anaheim anymore from the playoff losses, and they do now. And with the injuries, you know, Giordano with hitting Fowler, like it's just. I think it's going to be bad blood boiled over just almost instantly, especially if there's a hit or if the game starts to get out of hand on the scoreboard. I mean, I can't wait for that game on Wednesday. But then you're talking about Friday, Patrick Line. You saw that ridiculous. You know, toe drag he did, then backhand toe drag he did the other night. Yeah. Uh, that guy's fire. He's he's killing it right now. He's at the top of the goal scoring game with Ovechkin. And then, oh man, you know, two days later, you got to go to Edmonton and play against uh, Connor McDavid. <laughs> what a stretch of three games <laughs> the Ducks are going to have on the road. That's yeah. those, these are not easy games. No, they're not. And, and starting with that Winnipeg one, I think Lionel's on a fourteen game point streak right now for a teenager, which is just insane. He's one goal behind Ovechkin with about five games on him, so he's probably leading the NHL, I would assume, in, in goals per game. So he's a guy you got to watch out for. And then you've got Blake Wheeler on that team as well, who's leading the National Hockey League in assists. In assists, I wouldn't have expected Blake Wheeler to be the guy that would be leading the league in assists. Underrated playmaker, I guess, because you've got guys like Voracek. You've got Getzloff up there as well, guys you would expect to be up near the top 10 but Wheeler I think is an interesting one they've got Shifley back now they're just poised to make a deep line Truba just came back for them I mean they're getting guys from back from injury out of nowhere and they're still a good team before they were even in the lineup so this is going to be scary 
playing in Winnipeg's never easy. We saw it in the playoffs when they had the whiteout. Uh, I mean, it, it's.